We'll come back. We have moved a long journey. We have moved a long journey of user security. Now, people are using your database because you get them rights. Now, you need to keep track of their actions as they are using the database. Some of them will perform malicious actions on your database without you knowing. You need to know who did this at what time and when. What did they do with your database? That is what we are going to focus on in this episode of user security. We basically pay much attention to auditing. So with the auditing, we are just keeping track of user actions when they are using our database. To enable auditing, we use the audit keyword. And to disable auditing, we use the no audit keyword. We have different types of auditing. We have object auditing, privilege auditing, statement auditing. We can audit some actions whenever they are done and they are successful. Or we can audit whenever they are done and they are not successful. Or we can audit whenever they are done, whether they are successful or when they are not successful. So let's get back to the types of auditing. We have object auditing. With the object auditing, it keeps track of the use of object privileges. You remember object privileges we have just looked at in the previous section. Object privileges like update, insert, delete, etc. So we can decide to audit for object privileges whenever they are used, whether successful or unsuccessful. Whenever we enable object auditing, it is done to all users. We cannot specify that we need to only audit a specific user like for other types of auditing. We're going to see how it is done. Apart from the object auditing, we also have what we call the privilege auditing. With the privilege auditing, it focuses on system privileges. Whenever we use system privileges, we can decide to audit the use of system privileges. We have just looked at them in the previous session. Things like creating tables, creating users, altering users, etc. The difference between the privilege auditing and object auditing is privilege auditing can be done on specific user accounts rather than all the users. The final one is statement auditing. This one focuses on monitoring the use of specific SQL statements. Confusing, I know. What Oracle does is it groups different SQL statements into one statement. For example, if I want to audit for creating table, altering table, and truncating table, whenever somebody creates a table or makes change to table or truncates a table, Oracle gets those three statements, SQL statements, into one statement called table. So whenever we need to audit for those three, we just say audit table, meaning we are auditing for creating table, altering table, and truncating, and truncating table. Whenever we need to monitor or track or audit creating users, whenever somebody creates a user, altering a user, or dropping a user, Oracle gets the three statements and wraps them into one word or one statement called user. So whenever we want to audit for these three, we can just say audit user. That is what we call statement auditing. It simplifies our work as DBAs. After auditing, after we carry out auditing, we need to look at the audit trace or the audit records or the audit logs. These ones provide us with the information about the things we have been tracking. And this information, the audit logs are always stored in the operating system or in the data. It depends on us to decide whether you want. Before we start even auditing, we have to first ensure that we, that we specify the location for the audit trace. We do this using a parameter called the audit trail parameter. So let's get started. We need to connect as administrators. So once we get connected as administrators, we need to specify the default location, the default storage for our audit trails. In this case, in our case, we need our audit trails to be stored in the database. Once we are done with setting our audit trails and they are ready, now we can begin auditing. We are going to begin with the object auditing. We want to audit every select and insert statement that is done on the people table. So when you run, you can see that audit has been successful. It has been turned on. We can decide and say, audit for me only whenever it is successful. Whenever somebody selects from the hr.people and they succeed whenever somebody inserts data and they succeed so you can just say whenever you can even change the table from people to student and you can see that the audit has been successful or we can also say whenever these guys fail to get something whenever not successful it means whenever they fail to execute the select statement or the insert statement record for me oh sorry it is whenever not success. So any select statement that will be done on these two tables 
they will be reporting to the audit trail. Let us also enable some system auditing and say audit. We need to anybody who creates a user should have we should report should be tracked and we record the statement in the audit trails. So you can say audit create user. So here we are saying that we are auditing create user by alias only that user account whenever successful. The difference between system auditing and the object auditing is we can specify an individual with the system auditing and we say by this person, by a particular user account. We don't want to do it, but that doesn't mean that we cannot do it to all the users. We can still do it and we eliminate this by clause. So when you run, you can see that we can still do an auditing on all users or on specific users. Now I want to stop this auditing on all users uh, whenever it is successful and I just uh, how am I going to disable it and to disable it I'll just say no audit so when I run they're no longer auditing the create statement by users whenever successful so we are ready to go we can do statement auditing where we have we can say audit audit user edit user by a so with this statement we mean that audit for me alias's actions whenever he creates a user whenever he alters a user and whenever he drops a user so let us try to connect as alias and we do this some of these tasks let's use alias's account to try to create an account for geoffrey uh let us try to allow him select something select stuff from employees table which belongs to hr don't remember whether he has a right he doesn't have a right to do that and this will be enough entries let's get the records from the audited phase if we need to see those people who try to use the select statement who try to create users and they were not trying to really get the data so let us try to check for the audit trails and we see we need to first be connected as administrators and once we are connected as administrators you can run this command uh select username super text uh timestamp from dba underscore audit underscore trail you can see when you run this you can see that a lot we have 209 rows returned simply because my database they, it has been auditing for a long time so you can see all these guys have been doing a lot of stuff on our database let us try to zero down on some of the queries there has been a lot so let us just filter out only those for today, 5th, today, 5th of May by the time of the recording. Wow, look at all this. It has been captured so well in the database. Elias Abraham trying to grant this. This one revoked some rights from this. The Gilpray, all everything you have done today. So this is how we can easily see what have been, guys, you see, Elias try to create this user. Elias created, try to create a user called Geoffrey. This is what we have just done. Abraham wanted. So this is what we call auditing. And indeed, there is a nice report on everything that has transpired today. So that is how we can carry out the auditing. And this is how we can get all the audit records and everything possible in our database. So I hope it has been informative for you. Let's meet in the next section and thank you for watching.